This is Christopher Cernike hosting episode 7 of season 5 of the Current Topics in Science podcast. This podcast will address breaking scientific news in light of the origins debate and host interviews with scientists. In today's video, we're going to be covering the top 5 evolutionary goofs. This podcast is available on the following platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Video recordings of the podcast will be uploaded to YouTube. Enjoy the podcast. Public schools in the United States could be closed by this event, an event that many a child considers to be a true lifesaver. The event in question is called a snow day. What was especially good was when the snow days would line up with the vacation days that public schools would sometimes give in December so various holidays could be celebrated. However, Nothing quite sucked the magic out of the vacation than the giant work packet that students were given to complete the task. Even worse, sometimes, if you made a mistake in one of your problems, you'd have to get out your eraser if it wasn't already on your pencil in your hand. Did you know that April 15th, speaking of holidays, is National Rubber Eraser Day? Why April 15th? That's because it was on April 15th in the year 1770, that philosopher and theologian Joseph Priestley, discoverer of oxygen and, with it, the carbonated liquid we now know as soda water, described a substance excellently adapted to the purpose of wiping from paper the mark of black lead pencil. The substance was rubber. There's an interesting science behind why erasers work. It's because the polymers that make them up are stickier than the particles of paper. So granite, particles end up getting stuck to the eraser instead. They're almost like sticky magnets. Speaking of science, indeed, even the most brilliant of scientists can make mistakes. None of us are above them. For instance, did you know that sometimes people can be mistaken about what constitutes a valid scientific theory? I believe in case in point is Dr. Penny Higgins, who says that ID, intelligent design, is not a scientific theory. I believe that she's mistaken in saying that intelligent design is not science. But what is it that leads her to that conclusion? In part, it might be because she believes science restricts itself to material knowledge. This definition of science would certainly come as a surprise to the founders of modern science, like Sir Isaac Newton, who believed that God created the universe. Dr. Donald Batten, another scientist who believes in God, comments on this issue saying that today, science is equated with naturalism. Only materialistic notions can be entertained, no matter what the evidence suggests. There's no logically valid way that the materialist can define evolution as science and creation as religion, so that he or she can ignore the issue of creation. In the description of this podcast, you can find a link to a resource by my friend Dr. Casey Lutskin, who explains why the theory of intelligent design is a scientific one, along with other resources like our interview with him. To continue with the theme of intelligent design, at one point, It was thought that the human genome was unintelligently designed because it was loaded with junk. In fact, Dr. Kenneth Miller said that the genome resembles nothing so much as a hodgepodge of borrowed, copied, mutated, and discarded sequences and commands that have been cobbled together by millions of years of trial and error against the relentless test of survival. This mindset, according to Dr. Luskin, which was born and bred from the Darwinian paradigm, even stifled research into the function of junk DNA. The Journal for Science reported that the junk DNA mindset repelled mainstream researchers from studying non-coding DNA. Fortunately, some rogue scientists conducted research at the risk of being ridiculed that led to the overturning of the junk DNA paradigm. 
Indeed, what this research showed was that our DNA is the densest information storage mechanism known in the universe. Dr. Gitt continues by saying, Let's look at the amount of information that could be contained in a pinhead volume of DNA. If all this information was written into paperback books, it would make a pile of such books 500 times higher than from here to the moon. The design of such an incredible system of information storage indicates a vastly intelligent designer. And just like it would be a mistake to call DNA junk, it would also be a mistake to say that the human body could not have been intelligently designed because it's chock full of vestigial organs. The Oxford Language Dictionary defines vestigial to mean an organ or body part that becomes functionless in the course of evolution. This is a mistake because even if it is the case that a part of our body has worn down over time, that would no more disprove design than a car getting a flat tire would disprove the existence of automobile designers. As Dr. John Sanford said in the documentary Evolution's Achilles Heels, because of genetic entropy, the human race should be devolving, not evolving. Basically, the human race is degenerating. The human genome is rusting out like a car. And even though the human genome is experiencing genetic entropy, the human body still demonstrates amazing intelligent design, and organs that were once considered to be vestigial have been consistently shown to have a function, like the appendix, which is a storehouse for beneficial bacteria. Concerning vestigial organs, there's an interview with an anatomy and physiology teacher named Peterson Francois on the Current Topics in Science podcast. This interview can be found in the description, along with other resources on vestigial organs. Indeed, humans are the product of design, not evolutionary history. In fact, did you know that two pieces of supposed evidence for the evolutionary theory turned out to be hogwash? In fact, hogwash is a quite literal way to describe what happened with Nebraska Man. An evolutionary geologist by the name of Harold J. Cook had found a tooth over in Snake Creek, a quarry in Nebraska. He mailed this tooth to the evolutionary zoologist Dr. William King Gregory, who declared that it looked to him as if the first anthropoid ape of America had been found. The 1922 Illustrated London News featured an artist's rendition of what the ape man may have looked like. The idea that this was some sort of missing link was quickly dashed when a fossil hunter by the name of Thompson had found the same teeth in the jaw, not of an ape man, but in a Pekari pig. And while the Nebraska man was hogwash, Piltdown man was a complete fraud. Evolutionary archaeologist Charles Dawson had forged a missing link. He took the skull of a modern human and the jawbone and the teeth of an orangutan, and he put them together by filing down the orangutan's teeth to make them look human, and then chemically treating the bones to make them appear ancient. And it's unfortunate that evolutionary supporters have to resort to fraud to promote the evolutionary theory, because science, in many ways, is about truth. Do the predictions of a theory ring true or not? The final mistake that evolutionists like those at Scientific America make is that so-called creationist nonsense is not scientific because creationists, in their view, do not make predictions, unlike evolutionary biology which routinely makes predictions. This is not the case. Creation scientist Dr. Jason Lyle predicted, based on biblical principles, that the James Webb Space Telescope would detect fully formed, fully designed, galaxies at unprecedented distances. We did a full-length interview with Dr. Lyle and his papers with his other predictions can be found in the description below. Everyone makes mistakes, and because of human sin, the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. But thankfully though, because of his love, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Thank you very much for taking the time to learn with us on current topics in science, where scientific discoveries are examined in light of the origins issue. You can find all of the references that I mentioned throughout this podcast, along with a link to the official Christ Jesus Ministries merch store in the description. 
please share and subscribe to the Current Topics in Science podcast. It's available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Thanks again for listening, and remember, the truth saves.